let's let's talk about a little bit about the the coaching now like uh, from the player's perspective that you experience on the NBA level versus European level obviously David Blatt has a, has a completely different mindset than the let's call it like the average European coach because he's he's he thinks differently I know I know him and I know how he really expresses himself and also reaches players but in your experience from the NBA and maybe it's more so assistant coaches outside of the game like in between practices the the communication level of that you experience in Europe versus America of how they interact with players yeah I I you know when I was playing in Italy in Benetton my coach was Mike D'Antoni mm-hmm. you know he was a coach back then before he was became big in in, in the NBA so I kind of really always felt comfortable with uh, American style of coaching, the communication that, that coaches have and, and uh, certain freedom that they give to players and, and stuff like that. Still strict and still structured, but much different than, you know, especially like Yugoslavian old school of basketball, which I also had coaches and under some coaches I performed really well, but I, I felt more at home with, with American style of coaching, especially then in the NBA and, and you know, my, 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 my time with New Jersey Nets with Lawrence Frank and then the reason why I came back to Europe, or one of the reasons, was because I went to play for David Blatt. Like otherwise, I don't think if me and him were not talking a lot over that summer and him explaining me how he sees basketball and what he tries to do as far as my role would be, I don't think I would be. I don't think the team would be able to convince me, even though I, my contract offer. I mean, the contract was financially was was you know was was big at that time. Um, so I always felt that I fit better with those coaches who have that kind of background. Even when I was in Bamberg playing in Germany, like Chris Fleming was the coach and, and I had a good run there, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that for me and I think for many players are, is very important the communication that the coach brings to the table and the upfront and honest that he is with you. I never liked coaching or coaches that tell you one thing just to satisfy you for that moment, but then do things differently, you know. Um, and, and I like the positivity that American coaches bring to the table, you know, not so much, not much the criticism and the negative things that they expose, but also trying to not, not hype you up, but trying to tell you and show you what you're capable of and, and building on that. And that always, help, always helped me as a player. It's a, it's a fair to say that American style of coaching is a confidence style of coaching. Like it, it really, it, it encourages you to be who you are as a player and it gives you a little bit of a, a more of a confidence, confident demeanor. And if you can't perform as the most confident possibility with the most uh, freedom that you can have, then you're probably not made for that level, right? Like, I mean, there's the other way, like you said, the, the, the old school mentality of getting the best out of you in regards to pushing yourself pushing your to you to the limit of like emotional frustration to the max and if you can't handle that then you can handle all this all the frustration that comes during the game but it's a different approach completely different and i think that more players are made for the confident style of coaching instead of the hypercritical style of coaching especially today yeah yeah i think that that has changed a little bit i think back in the day you know especially coming from europe or coming from the you know ex yugoslavian countries like it was normal that the coaches will be really tough on you and yeah i don't like the word to say negative but they would really when you made a mistake they made sure that you the whole world knows about you made a mistake you know like and you had to build on that you had to get through that and you became mentally stronger and, and stuff like that so there's benefits in that as well um wh- whereas you know the like we said the, the, the more of an american style of coaching was more about building confidence and even if you make a mistake like work through it you can do this you got this so i'm not saying one is better than others because otherwise if one would be clearly better than everybody would coach in certain way i think for coaches it's more important to uh, understand what kind of players they have and then you know, adjust the, their coaching a little bit, or especially the communication towards what kind of players do you have. Do you have a player that needs to be told that he's doing a bad job and, it, and it's not working for him to be more motivated and to get out of that slump? Or if a coach is, ma- or if a player is making mistakes and, and, and you know that his confidence is fragile, it's better not to get too hard on him because then you lose him even more. So I think that that's, that's something that some coaches at times forget players we're different the mentalities are different the confidence levels are different the reactions to certain situations we react differently so that's that's what i miss sometimes with coaches who would yes treat everybody equally of course that's important but individual communication i thought it had to be sometimes the coaches that we knew how to adjust person to person i thought are are, are considered better coaches 
Yeah, I there's several things. There's I think there's it can be a double standard within like within the t- team concept when you talk to the team. Yes, the different roles and Andrea talked about it too. John Kerry, like, like there's different roles have different expectations. So you can't hold the star as uh, you can't hold the role player to the same standard as the star. But in general, the the principle should be the same for everybody. But whenever you have individual communication one on one, like you said, the reaching somebody is completely different from person to person so you have to find you have to have this player this uh, feel for the person feel for the for the for the individual that that you just that's how you get the best out of them but also on top of that if i, I want to add one more thing is was that, that not only that you do you have to know who you have as a player what personality you have but also who you are as a coach who you are as a person because the players look through your identity in a heartbeat if you're trying to be somewhere somebody else and you're trying to pretend to be this hard-nosed coach, and then all of a sudden you just you become wishy-washy, you slip up. Because if you're a hard-nosed coach, you have to be hard-nosed every single practice, every single hour, every single moment. You can't let anything slip. You start slipping here and there, the player is going to look through it, and then you're just going to, your identity starts crumbling. So I think it's more important for coaches before they know who the players are, who they are, mm-hmm. and to, to, to portray themselves as an authentic uh, coach. Basically. Very good. I, I think you said one important word at the end, authentic, you know, I think the coaches need to understand who they are and, and what kind of coaching style they have and what they bring to the table. Um, you know, faking something, I think players sooner or later are going to are going to see that and, and that doesn't doesn't work well, you know, and, and we can talk about whether it's communication, whether it's, you know, something else, but, uh, you know, being authentic and being direct, I think it's, it's extremely important and, um, you know, knowing how to connect with players and especially with the leaders on the team, I think it's something that, and you know better than me, I mean, it's, it's very important for coaches because, you know, you're going to go as far as your leaders on the team push you together with the coach. You know, if you have a leader of the team that is supposed to be a leader, but he's dragging behind, like the whole team is going to be slacking, right? But if you have a leader, whether he's being yelled at or not, I'm not talking about that, but if you have a leader that he connects with the coach and you see that your leader on the team, whether it's a captain or a veteran or the best player, whatever it is, he trusts and he believes the coach and that thing is working and it's functioning and everybody's going to fall in line and, and, and follow, you know? So that's, that's just from my different experiences that I had when, you know, the coach and, and the main player on the team would, would show true leadership and how important that was. And, and that was, for example, when I was with the Nets and, uh, and Jason Kidd and, and, and Lawrence Frank had a, I would say a pretty quiet relationship where they were not super communicated with each other, but they had this trust and, Jason Kidd would follow what Lawrence Frank said, and, and we all fell in line, and, 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 and that was it, you know. And on the other hand, there were situations where, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about names, but the leadership would fall apart between the coach and the top team, I mean, top player. And those things did not well end well, because then the coach has to deal with all the personalities. Everybody now wants his five minutes and becomes a problem, you know. That was, that was going to be my follow-up question, because of that uh, you already, I mean, you basically answered it, because if... If the leader does does not, I mean, you give the coach so many chances and you try to, you really try to incorporate everything, all the ideas. But if you see and you yourself as a star player don't believe in it, the player is going to sniff that out as well. And you can't, you can't follow somebody who doesn't believe in it, right? So I think it's a trickle down effect. And then the coach just picks up the pieces or he feels that he feels that it's not going to work. And there's, it's, yeah. it's <clears throat> dead end. <throat> I agree. And and one aspect that I think is important to that is is setting goals. You know, I think especially between coach and the top player, top two, three players, like it's so important to say, OK, we're going into this season and these are our goals and that's what we try to achieve. And and then I think everybody kind of follows that goal and is trying to time or trying to reach that goal. Whereas I've been on some teams that we didn't know what we actually expected of us. Like, what are we trying to achieve here? Like, you know, are we trying to win the championship? Are we trying to just participate? Should we just just made the playoffs and that's enough and that was always ended up in, in in disaster because it was kind of like just headless chickens running around and everybody and then and then it becomes a situation where everybody tries to get his right like i want to yeah. get mine i want to get mine i want to get mine and i've been in situations like this and that's not good and it's not enjoyable for a player either yeah there's no purpose to the season at the end right then you yeah just that's, can't, that's you, that's not that's not uh that's not what you want you know that's yeah. that's, that's it's the worst you can be is is going to practices and, and, and playing games but not knowing what you're actually trying to achieve. Sure, yeah. win. Yes, everybody wants to win. But basketball season is composed of small steps, practices, then wins, and then the, the major goal. 
And I think whatever that goal is, you know, staying in the first division, making the playoffs, you know, making to the finals, winning the championship. I think the, the team, the club needs to recognize that. It needs, the goal needs to be realistic and it needs to be like a religion. Like that's where we want, what you want to do. And that's what we work for every day. Without the goal, it's like you're just going to work and it's like just another day. And that's not good. I, my, yeah. I, the experiences I have with those situations were, were only negative. Yeah, you have to you have to also like like you said set goals, but you have to make, give the feeling out that you're building towards something. You know, you're yes. building something, and I like to say there was like there's this expression that you don't want to feel your workers shouldn't feel like they're they're laying bricks. They should feel like they're building a cathedral. Like yes. you're build you're build you're not just laying bricks every day, but you actually want to see the big picture. Like this is going to be a cathedral when it's all said and done, and I'll I'll be a part of this. You know, yeah, and yeah. this is this is what everybody wants. No, you put it you put it perfectly. I I, I totally agree. Um, I forgot who did the quote, so I can't, I can't, I can't shout out to them, but somebody else did this quote.